Kristen and Angela, how are you guys doing today? We're doing awesome. Very good. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. I'm kind of jealous of you coming back from that cruise. Oh, yeah. It was fantastic. I could imagine. Yeah. Well, next- what was the weather like? A lot better than it is here today. Um, No snow. Um, The temperatures were anywhere from the high 60s to the mid 80s. Wow. Yeah, it was wonderful. We didn't have rain at all. Sunny skies. It was wonderful. Where did you guys take take off from? L.A. L.A. Yeah. Wow. Which, that was my first time cruising out of L.A., uh, and it was quite an experience. It's like right out of the industrial port. Mm. You know, you hear about all those supply chain issues. Yeah. I kind of saw where it was happening. Were as the, as were I the, had a drink in my hand. <laughs> so you could care less. That's right. I'm like, well, it's all right now. <laughs> that is funny. All you cared about is that drink in your hand. I did, yeah. <laughs> That's funny. So, uh, Kristen, you did not go on vacation, but you're still here with us. I did not. And it's, it was kind of sad. But you know what? It's great. It's fine. I'm dealing with the snow. <laughs> I'm, I'm going, I think I'm going to Miami in January. So. Oh, I'll I'll be yeah. I'll be the one enjoying the weather then. <laughs> Miami is a wild place. I was I was just there recently and it was the first time ever going there and it was I was like, "Whoa, this place is wild." Yeah, it's- so uh my best friend and I are pot, uh, potentially going because there I do CrossFit and there's a CrossFit oh. competition happening down there in uh called Wadapalooza. So I think we're going to go for the weekend to go see the competition and it's going to be crazy. <laughs> That's very cool. Yeah. Where do you do CrossFit at? Uh, Redemption Fitness and Holt. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I don't, have yeah. you heard of it? Yeah. I had a uh, Daniel on. He yeah. used to be the owner. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it's now owned by uh, Jamie Latimer. Who okay. Who is uh, a master's athlete from the 35 to 39 category. She's really good. Wow. So yeah. do you ever see yourself competing? I have competed like at the local level. Okay. Um, I'm not anywhere near <laughs> like what the actual CrossFit athletes can do, but it's still a lot of fun. The community is amazing. I would definitely recommend it for people that are looking to get into fitness and just have a really awesome community around them. Yeah. That's one thing I found about uh, competing because I, I used to compete in kettlebells. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. And everybody is super supportive during like during the co- like competition. Mm-hmm. And I remember that when I was when I was competing, the whole room they didn't even know who I was. They were rooting for me, and I was I was struggling. And they're like, "Come on, David, let's go, let's go, let's go!" And it was it was the greatest feeling ever. Mm-hmm. I've been I've been that last person before, and <laughs> it, it's like you don't want to be that last person, but at the same time, it's nice to have the encouragement there. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and it's cool because it's like a non judgmental zone. Like you right. you you assume that when you go into this place that everybody's like meatheads and they're <laughs> like, they just don't, they, they don't care about the other athletes, but in reality, they're some of the nicest people that you'll meet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So that brings us to, um, what you guys are here for to talk about JCI and, uh, what it is you guys do for the community. Yeah. So, so let's talk about like your, your roles with JCI and what JCI is. Okay. So JCI, uh, stands for junior chamber international. Uh, we are the Lansing chapter. There are chapters all over the state of Michigan. Uh, so you have your local chapters, then you have the state chapter, which is would be JCI Michigan, and then there's the national chapter, which is JCI USA. And then you can even go one further, and there's JC like JCI International because this is a worldwide organization. Uh, there are chapters in I don't I don't know how many countries, but there's chapters in a lot of countries. What is the purpose of JCI? So JCI tries to create um, leadership opportunities for young people. Uh, You have to be between the ages of 18 and 40 to even be uh, a member of the organization. And we're just trying to create positive change within the community. Uh, JCI Lansing has been around since 1929, and we've done a lot of stuff for the Lansing community and even just within the last few years. Uh, We host the Easter egg hunt every year on the Capitol lawn. Obviously due to COVID, we haven't been able to do that. Um, And then we've been doing uh, Stuff the Bus, which is the event that was coming, our next event that's coming up here in a couple of weeks since 2005. So we've been, we have quite a few longstanding events that have been within the community for quite some time. And is the event to kind of establish leaders in the community? Is that the purpose? Not the not the event. I'm sorry. The JCI is that the purpose is to establish leaders within 
yeah. local communities. Yeah, and it's really good for networking as well. I've met quite a few people from other chapters that have become good friends of mine and who are, you know, if you in within business or banking and say you're looking for like a financial advisor, now you have that connection there. It's it's really really good for making friends, developing skills and that's overall having, again, kind of like the CrossFit community, you have your own little community of leaders. So That's very cool. So yeah. how does one get involved? Um, or how does one sign up? So it's funny. So I got involved with JCI because uh, the job that I was working at the time a few years ago, I was relatively new to the Lansing area. And it was actually somebody from my CrossFit gym uh, that mentioned the JCs because my job at the time wanted me to – uh, reach out into the community and be like basically try and network within the community and outside organizations. And she was like, "Well, why not join the JCs?" And I'm sitting there like, "What? The, what, what is that? <laughs> what? What are the JCs?" Uh, so she actually took me to my first meeting, and it was a general membership meeting. And they basically just talked about the events that were coming up and other volunteer opportunities that uh, we could. Uh, go out into the community and do because it's not just events that we put on we also provide like try and go out and help volunteer at other events as well um so i got involved there i took about maybe three or four months for me to like actually commit and join and then i kind of dipped my toe in with uh being on the committee for easter egg hunt and then after that i was the chair for the actual stuff the bus uh event that we did back in 20 uh, 2019. So uh, you can be as involved as you want. You, I mean, you don't have to become as involved as I am right now. Um, it's something that you can take your time with. Uh, we definitely don't want people to rush into it if they don't feel comfortable doing anything like that at this point. Uh, but it is a good way to like build on your skills and build in as a leader. And for me, especially like I never thought that I would be where I'm at right now within the organization from when I first started. What kind of benefits, what kind of benefits do you think you received after you joined JCI? Honestly, the friendships that I've made have been extremely, extremely powerful and very, um, like very reliable. I really love the people that are a part of this organization And then also uh, the connections that you make within the community as far as like business partnerships go. That's something that I never experienced before. So that was really cool. And I think Angela can attest to that as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, I mean, two of the people I went on a cruise with are people I met through JCI. Uh, One is out of Redford. I never would have met him without the uh, organization. So uh, and we were joking, we met in 2009. We never expected in 2020 we would be cruising in the Pacific together. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy how one thing can like bring people from all walks of life together. Right. It's wild. Now, do all the chapters kind of um, share the same interests or some of the same um, goals and or are they specific to each geographic location? I think we all have the same idea and okay. values in mind that we want to create positive change within our communities. Um, a lot of the other chapters, they, like they'll have their own longstanding events like Kalamazoo. Kalamazoo does a ghost tour every year and that's actually one of their biggest fundraisers. Mm. Um, and that's been a longstanding event for them. For I, I'm not sure how long, but it's, they've been doing it for a long time. Um, so Yeah. <laughs> um now jci what is because i feel like there's kind of like there's like a vague understanding of what it actually is can you break down a little bit like what kind of things you guys do like let's say i'm i'm wanting to join jci what could i expect to get from jci other than me helping volunteer for with different events and and whatnot i can take that yeah Um, So one of the things that um, was the founding purpose of the organization is to help young professionals get established within the community. Um, So that's one of the very first things that we will promote. Um, We are a dues-paying organization. Some businesses will offer to pay uh, for or sponsor uh, membership. 
Um, but one of the very first things that we try to offer is leadership development. And sometimes that's just getting the courage to volunteer. We're very different than some of the other volunteer organizations where you don't just show up for a couple hours, maybe get a t-shirt and leave. There's meetings that we have ahead of time to get ready, whether they're in person or virtual. Um, we have documentation for a lot of our longstanding events that have all the notes from us doing this for years past. So we'll help, you know, get um, newer members incorporated with some of that documentation and kind of explain the method to the madness, why we do what we do. But we're always open for change. That's one of the things that I really like about uh, JCI is we're not cemented in. It's not the type of organization where you have to do something because it's always been that way. We're always looking for new ideas, new energy. Um, if we have to change something up that's been happening for a long time, we're all pretty open um, to those suggestions. So, I mean, one of the things that I really enjoyed, one of our big projects that we had in the Lansing community, we're kind of known on the street as the JCs. So that's what a lot of people um, remember us as. Uh, and we did haunted houses, um, big haunted houses for years. Uh, and around 2010, the fire code changes just became too strict for a temporary um, organization. Yeah, okay. it was just, it was too expensive for us to get the fire code approval. Um, so we kind of shifted and that's kind of opened up some, some things like, um, you know, Snowman Army and some of the other events that we've done. But um, we had a lot of people who had really strong feelings about the the presence and how we were going to kind of keep our name relevant, even though we, for a very good reason, we couldn't do that event anymore. Um, and it was just really interesting. Some of the newer people coming in, they didn't have any ties to that event and hearing all the other things that they know us for. Um, and that just kind of helps us realize we, we can just keep growing um, and just keep expanding what we're focusing on. Um but it was almost the newer people coming in that had the stronger voice, which you don't usually find in an organization that's been around for almost 100 years. So like Kristen said, I think it's true. You get out of the organization what you put in. Um, but for someone new, we try to at least encourage them to maybe co-chair a project, um, organizing something maybe with someone who's had a little bit more experience, um, dip their toes into it. And then, you know, see how they liked it. If they want to share something on their own, they have a new idea, then we try to encourage that as well. So um, it's amazing. Like the first time you chair an event, and Chris can kind of speak to this, you put out media releases, and the first time the press shows up, you're like, oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I did yeah. this. Now what am I going to do? But, I mean, we all kind of rally around and, and help help get you through it. So. Um, and then it's kind of neat because you can show your family and friends and say, hey, look what I did this afternoon. Um, and you get some nice sound bites and things. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of you never know what to expect. <laughs> and, and yeah, and we always encourage um, fresh ideas and new projects. Um, because of COVID for the last couple of years, we have not been able to do the, our normal long withstanding projects. So in 2021, I ended up chairing a project called Rowathon. Uh, because our gym was still... Uh, that we sounds like it sucks, by the way. Oh, no. <laughs> what? No, it's <this> great. <laughs> so what we did, or what I did was uh, we made pledges to row so many meters for charity, oh, basically. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. It was, <laughs> hey, it was fun. It was, the, it the was a lot of fun. The act of raising the money sucks. The <laughs> idea of raising money is awesome. But. That's that's fair enough. It's, <laughs> it, it, again, it, that that kind of event is like a niche event. It only yeah. certain people would probably be interested in doing that. However, no, that's actually pretty cool. I would I would definitely do it. Yeah. It. However, um, the fact is, I was able to bring something that I was really interested in, and I was with the help of the JCs, I was able to put on this event that I probably would never have tried to do if I wasn't a part of this organization. And what were you raising the money for? Um, so have you heard of the Love for Lily campaign? No. So um, Lily Bowen is a, I think she's about 10-year-old girl now, and uh, she's been suffering from neuroblastoma for the last, like since she was four. Wow. Uh, so we raised money for um, 
her medical bills and her for her and her family. And we raised about three thousand dollars from that one event. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, we were very sad that we weren't able to put it on again this year. We just had some logistical issues so that we weren't able to do it. So we're, we're really hoping that we can put it back on again next year. That's very cool. Yeah. I had a question I was going to ask, and I don't remember what it was. No. <laughs> it happens to me all the time. <laughs> happens to me all the time, too, on the podcast. I'm like, oh, boy, this is going to be rough. Um, so what is your involvement with JCI? So I'm actually a past president. I have uh, exceeded the age limit. Um, so I am not an active member, but as um, part of my role with a past president, I'm considered a lifetime member. And anytime anybody on the board um, or current member reaches out, we're available to assist. So uh, Kristen asked for me to um, be involved, I've, um, and I was happy to be here. Well, thank you for coming. Well, yeah, absolutely. She's, you're what's called... An exhausted rooster. I am an exhausted <laughs> rooster, and I feel every minute of that today. But yeah, um, can you can you explain what the senatorship yeah. is? Yep, yeah. absolutely. So um, throughout um, throughout my career, uh, I was lucky enough to join the organization in 2007. I just googled it. That's how I joined. So when you ask how you joined, I I googled it. I saw the site. There were a bunch of people having fun in the pictures on the website. And there was a, an option to just sign up um, on the website. I did it without ever attending my first meeting, uh, which was rare for the time. It was 2007, but that's an avenue that some people take. Um, and I, I kind of put my toe in the water 2007, 2008. By 2009, I uh, had a board position. I was a membership director, uh, so I was helping – recruit people, uh, maintain our membership. Um, and then after that, I, I served a couple of years as president. Um, throughout like 2010 through 2020, um, I was really actively involved. And the highest honor you can bestow to a lifetime member um, or to any past member is what's called a senatorship. This is another one of the international programs. It's very limited. The chapter nominates uh, somebody to act as a senator, and you are basically um, another lifetime membership. It's kind of a, another group, a lot of people that are over the age of 40, um, international, so another networking opportunity where we're exchanging ideas of just how to actively help without being overwhelming <laughs> um, the existing members, the existing chapters. Um, so it's it's been a really cool opportunity. I was very honored to become a senatorship or to become a senator. Um, and it's just it's not something that's very common. I think maybe one or two out of every uh, one or, you know, 200 members, depending on the chapter, really end up getting um, the senatorship. So it's just it was a big honor. Well, I, I don't think you have to age out to you even don't. receive the senatorship. Right. Okay. You can, yeah, you can still be a current member and be nominated for a senatorship. Yep. It's not something that you receive when um, you age out. Right. So that's that's another cool thing about that. It one, is. One thing that kind of stands out to me a little bit is the fact that you guys have an age requirement and you, I can't remember which one of you mentioned, but you guys are always open to new ideas mm -hmm. and making things better or like going in a different direction. And that's one thing I think is like a successful key to a lot of things is because when, whenever you get an organization or a business and the same people have been there forever and they're kind of stuck in their ways, they don't want things to change mm -hmm. and like, no, that's not going to work. We have to do it this way. Things don't get better. In fact, they get worse. And I mean, for instance, look at politics. Um, <laughs> right. So in, in a lot of ways, like, like constantly, you know, renewing that allows for different ideas, allows for better, better ideas and different opportunities. I think that's really cool. Yeah. And the fact it, the age limit actually used to be 20, like you had to be 21 to 40. They actually just lowered it within the last couple of years. Um, and I think that's really helpful because we need fresh ideas. We need fresh people. We need young people wanting to make positive changes within their community uh, and so, you know, we we are very, very open to recruiting people who are willing to challenge even even us, even because we need that, too. So <clears throat> let's say somebody like me joins 
um, and I want to, I want to like throw an event for fundraising or something. Like how would that, pro- what would that process look like? Would I have to fundraise? Like what, what is the process? Well, I guess I would kind of depend on the event that you want to hold. So what you can fundraise for, uh, like a cause or you can fundraise for the chapter. So that way we have funds to host the event. So okay. I guess that would be kind of be under like, what, what exactly are you raising money for? So I, like if somebody wants to raise money for somebody that has cancer, they want to pay their medical bills. Would that be something that you would have to discuss with the chapter and they'd vote on? Like, what is that process like? So it would be brought up as an idea at like a general membership meeting. And then um, we would encourage the uh, said person to create a committee. And then once they have a committee created, they would have their first committee meeting and then they would create what's called a project management guide, which would literally list everything out from the goals. Uh, What do you want to accomplish? What's your budget look like? Because if if you're going to be spending money, we need to know like what's coming in and out of the chapter funds. Uh, What are the potential problems? Who's going to be doing what? Is there going to be media there? And so it literally lists out like your whole event. Um, then that gets voted on at one of the board meetings. And so it's like a preliminary report. And then once the event happens, you go back to the project management guide and then you fill out, okay, these are the things that were good. These were the things that we could improve on. This is how much money we spent. And then that gets voted on as a, like a, at the next board meeting. And then those are the project management guides that we use for if we want to do that event again in the following years. So mm-hmm. that we already have the template made up. Yeah. And then you can just go and edit back what we had already done before. That's cool. Yeah. That gives you like a, a really good learning opportunity. It, it's a, it's it's hard work. Doing <laughs> one of those is can be hard work, especially if you're creating one from scratch. If you're doing one, like the Stuff the Bus one. The Stuff the Bus one is pretty easy because, again, this is a, a project that we've been doing for years. So What we, is that event? Uh, what, is or what is that project? Yeah. Oh, okay. So stuff the bus, which is the event that we're actually having in a couple weeks. Uh, we drive a cat bus out to a big box store. And then we have a beneficiary that is receiving donations uh, from shoppers that are going in to the big box store that day. So we'll stand outside, we'll pass out flyers uh, uh, stating like what items are needed or what, uh, you know, what, who's benefiting from it. Um, in the past, we have helped uh, Haven House where we've adopted families. And so uh, they would request certain items and we would hand those lists to shoppers. They would go in, buy the items, and then we would stuff the bus with those items that was requested of the family. Uh, when I chaired it in 2019, we decided to take a bit of a different route. And we actually um, helped out two nonprofits that year. We did Capital Area Humane Society, and we also did Eve the Women's Shelter. So we had uh, people standing outside of PetSmart and Walmart, and then uh, we would pass out flyers and then we would uh, people would come out and then stuff the bus with items for both of those nonprofits. That's uh, really cool. Yeah. And this year we're benefiting a Gardner International Magnet School. Uh, typically teachers end up spending a lot of their own salaries on, you know, supplies for their classrooms and even basic needs for the kids sometimes. So that's what uh, that's who's benefiting this year from the event. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. Mm hmm. That, that's um, that's amazing. I didn't even know that that happened. Like that goes on in Lansing that you guys did that. Yeah. So typically we would do it outside the Walmart and Eastwood Town Center. Okay. Uh, and we've done it usually the very first Saturday of every every December. Okay. Um, it's also the same day as Shop with a Cop, but that's usually done by the time that we uh, bring the cat bus over there. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. It is. It's <laughs> really cool to see yeah. the bus fill up. So. Um, that it project, literally gets filled up. It gets oh, really full. Yeah, yeah. I think <laughs> it does. I mean, we're in there like trying to put, fill. It's like a like. Tetris game. Like we're trying <laughs> to fill every nook so that um, we have enough space. But yeah, I, I think in tw- when we did it in 2019 uh, for both charities, we raised over seven thousand uh, dollars. There was about seven thousand dollars worth of goods wow. for between uh, for both of the nonprofits. Wow. that were there that's amazing yeah yeah and, and the and the project management guide has like who to contact at walmart who to contact at cata what we've done as far as like who we've um 
who we've raised money for or who we've benefited in all the years since we've been doing this since 2005. So it also lists all the mistakes that you've previously <laughs> made. That was that was one thing in 2019 I learned. <laughs> and it's and it's evolved, but that's yeah. part of the benefit of, you know, trying something new. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's a home run and sometimes, you know, it's a strikeout, but you're not going to know until you try it. Right. And the even if we have mistakes or things we want to improve, it's usually not noticeable to the participants. It's just, you know, things we can do to make it a little bit smoother. Mm-hmm. What is the feeling like when whenever you stuff a bus or whatever it is, whatever project you guys are working on and you accomplish it and it benefits somebody greatly? What is that feeling like? It's extremely rewarding. It is also extremely relieving <laughs> because it is so much hard. It, like it is hard work to put on one of those events. So when you know you've done a good job, like that, it's just like a big weight has been lifted off your shoulder, and you feel so good that like you know you made a difference within the community. Um, projects have even projects of ours have even gone on to win awards at the state level. So um, the JCI Michigan. We'll have, I think, how many conferences do they have? Three a Is year. Three? Yep. Okay. So, yeah, they have three conferences a year, and uh, you can submit uh, your projects that you have put on to, uh, for, like, different categories and for awards. Um, so Stuff the Bus has won before. Our fun, big fundraising one that we've done, Snowman Army, that has won an award. What, what is that one? I'm going to let you take this one because this is <laughs> – I think you have some good stories with this one. Yeah, this is a fun one. So this one actually evolved from the haunted house, um, not moving forward, uh, that we, I talked about earlier. Um, one of the very first things that we did is, uh, try to figure out how we can keep our name going and, uh, come up with a, another fall or winter event. Um, and so our very first year after not doing an haunted house, we did a hauntings event. That's how it started. I don't even know if you know about this. No. <laughs> um, no, I don't. So one of our, our big business sponsors who are very thankful, um, to work with is sewn linen. Um, one of the past presidents is, actually works at sewn linen and she had said, if you could come up with a way to get rid of all this discarded linen, we'd be really happy because they have a bunch of lim- linen they can't rent out or use. And I was like, okay, we'll take it back to the committee and see what we can do. And we came up with a hauntings event. So people could, similar to like the Pink Flamingo fundraisers, people would buy a set of ghosts. We would put them on someone's lawn mm. and, you know, with a little notes explaining why we're doing it and then come back and move them, you know, to another location it was a lot of fun. Um, the thing we didn't like about it is it was it was fall. Like there was just it was hard to get everybody coordinated. Um, if someone wasn't home on a weekend when we were doing the hauntings, it was kind of running into some problems. And so it evolved. The next year, one of the things that we did was, hey, we can use even more linen if we build snowmen. So we <laughs> actually built an army of snowmen. Um, there's anywhere from you know. Five to 20, I think we had at one point like think, 70 snowmen built. I think Jeez. we have like 40 yeah. right now. Yeah. I think there's How 40. do you make that with linen? It's pretty cool. So <laughs> you'd have a stanchion. There's like a coffee can with cement and then you have this like the stick like in there and then you uh-huh. just stuff the linen with newspaper. Uh, so you make the snowman head. Then you tie out around the head to create the like the actual head and then you have the body. And so you stuff that with newspaper or plastic bags and whatnot, uh, tie it at the bottom again. And then you can just decorate the snowman however you want. Like we have a Spartan one, we have a Santa one, we have a yeah. Hawaiian one. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. That's really cool. <laughs> and each snowman's like three to four feet. I mean, they're big. Mm-hmm. So when you pull into your lawn or you <laughs> open your you know window in the morning, it it's noticeable. I mean, that's spread <laughs> out over the lawn. So it's funny. Uh, I've heard stories where a couple of our members would go like in the middle of the night yeah. and put it on people's lawns so that way, <laughs> they <would>. like they, <laughs> that way when they woke up in the morning and they see it, they're like, "What is that? What yeah. is that on our lawn?" <laughs> yeah. I've gotten caught. I got caught putting it on the lawn once. Yeah. Yeah. The, the ring cameras have really kind of changed that approach a little oh, bit, yeah. <laughs> but um, it's still a lot of fun because people are usually completely not expecting it yeah. um and then mm-hmm. what ends up happening which is kind of fun is there becomes like a little war like somebody sends it back so 
Um, yeah, it's fun. It's, so it's evolved. I think now we're kind of doing it prior. We were doing it for the holiday season. Now I think we're trying to do it like in February when people need a little bit of mm, excitement and yeah. fun and, and working it out that way. But it, it's been a lot of fun. Well, I mean, you know, along with the holiday season with people being gone, you know, traveling, you know, having plans and whatnot, it's kind of easier to push it back just a little bit yeah. just because we'll have more people that are able to drive the snowman around. Um, and yeah, like, Angela said it kind of it helps you put a smile on your face you know three months into winter (laughs) (laughs) how many events a year do you guys do well right now I think this past year we did so we did snowman army we did the park we did Krigo park cleanup so we did a cleanup for earth day uh, oh, we did, we helped out at Turning Point Donkey Rescue. That mm-hmm. was probably my favorite one that we did this year. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Turning Point no. Donkey Rescue. It's a, yeah, it's a donkey rescue that's located in Danceville. Um, I had seen somebody post about it on the 517 Community Living page. And I was like, this is so cool. We needed, we need to partner with them. <laughs> so I reached out to them and we were able to come up with a date in, uh, end of June and so we had about 10, 10 to 15 people come out. My mom came out. We had a, a member from a couple other chapters come out. And we helped uh, put up fencing for a new turnout pen for them. And it, we got done within like an hour and a half. And then we Holy played cow. with donkeys for in another hour. And we got <laughs> to learn about the rescue and you know how the donkeys came to be there. I think they have uh, miniature ponies, mules, and donkeys there. It wow. was so fun. It was so fun. <laughs> so you, how many? So how many events do you guys do? About four. Well, there's two big ones. Okay. It's usually stuff the bus and then um, uh, the Easter egg hunt on the Capitol lawn. So there's the two large events. Okay. Then we have our big fundraising event, which is Snowman Army. That would be our third one. And then I. Th- We'll we'll sprinkle in the the smaller projects where we partner with another organization. We'll go and volunteer with them. So we have about three big events, and then we'll sprinkle in little ones. We also try and throw our own events. So we'll do mixers, um, like try and do mixers like every other month, just to get the members together to go out and have a good time with one another. Um, we'll do a new member orientation. So whenever we have new members come in, uh, we'll hold an orientation for them to learn about the JCs and you know, what they're getting involved in and how they can get involved and whatnot. Um, so yeah, we have given three big events and then those little ones sprouted in. And I think we're going to, I think if we bring back Roathon, that'll be four big events that we do every year. What is your goals for like, what would you like to see like JC accomplish with the JCs? I would love to see our membership grow. Honestly, right now, um, because of COVID, our membership numbers have dwindled. Uh, when 2020 rolled around, we were on a roll. We had like, I think we had inducted six new members in like that January. Wow. And we were super excited for the year. And then March hit and it just, you know, it annihilated every plan that we had. Um, so it was really, really hard to yeah, try. I could and imagine it was, it's probably pretty difficult to do anything because everything you guys do is in person, right? Right. So we were trying to stay relevant, like through our Facebook page online. And we were trying to highlight like small businesses that, you know, were hurting and whatnot. Um, we were able to partner with the, uh, Waldemar nature center and we did, uh, help put on their virtual 5k. Uh, so we tried to, uh, promote that as much as we could. We brought volunteers out for that to help like man the course, make sure that it was cleaned up and whatnot. Um, But yeah, I mean, everything that we normally had done, we weren't able to do. So we weren't able to be out in the community. And I think our name did get uh, forgotten Mm -hmm. a little bit. So right now we we just, we want to grow. It's a building back phase. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. This year has been a Good in the sense that we have gained some new members, which is great. Uh, we did have, unfortunately, like about, it was about the year, I think 2020 was the year that we had a lot of members age out. So we were counting on that year to help grow us. And we've been kind of like in limbo ever since. So I would love to see our chapter grow. I would love to see young people come in and, you know, challenge us and bring new ideas and 
just wanting to come and help out the Lansing community. Yeah. I think that's awesome. I, I really think that's awesome what you guys do and how you guys um, are so involved in the community. Mm-hmm. Um, that's something that we need more of, especially oh, yeah. as like things get, things in our community seem to be getting harder and harder. People are losing jobs and not making as much money and um, inflation's crazy and just like things are just tighter for everybody. So having these services available for um, people who are in need or like donating things to people is very important. Yeah, we, I'm very proud to be a part of this organization and I was very fortunate to be uh, a part of the board this past year. Um, I've really enjoyed my time, but I'm, I would love to see others come and enjoy this with us and create the great, great memories and just really be a part of the Lansing community. And it is a great way to kind of dip your toe into a civic organization. Um, We're nonpartisan, which is unusual these days. Um, But you learn important things. You learn how to be part of a board. You learn how to be part of a committee. You learn Robert rules of order, um, kind of some of the documentation that we do. It's kind of helping to build that um, building blocks so that if you do want to get into local politics, if you do want to, you know, get into another nonprofit all of this is transferred. It is, you know, that is why it's age driven. Um, it's not intended to be somewhere you park for the rest of your life. It's right. intended to help you develop these skills. So then even beyond the JC experience, you're still an active contributor to your community. And there's not that many organizations um, that help teach those skills anymore. So we think it's important. How do you guys teach those skills? Is it all just hands on or is there like courses you guys offer or anything? A little bit of both, actually. There are trainings. So uh, the at the state level and even at the local level, you can put on trainings for, like, developmental skills. Uh, I know that there have been, in the past there have been some, like, resume writing development courses. There have been uh, interviewing courses. Uh, there was, I think, an event uh, where they taught young men how to tie a tie. Oh, wow. Cause I could do that. Right. I could teach that. Exactly. Right. <laughs> but I mean, yeah, and even debate. I mean, there's yeah. debate wow. skills. Where do you yeah. find debates outside of schools yeah. these days? Mm-hmm. I also think this is a great organization to learn how to work with people that you might not necessarily agree with. Mm. Yeah. Because, but, but the thing is, is that you are all working towards a common goal to make your community a better place, which I think is of skill that isn't necessarily looked at. It's a skill that's forgotten these days where people want, and I think it's accentuated because of social media, like because people are in these groups, Mm -hmm. but that's the thing. Like people are, have more in common than they don't. Mm -hmm. And, but they want to like divide over these stupid things, like these political issues or religious issues or whatever it is. And it's like, like we're all here for the same purpose. We Mm -hmm. all want the same thing. We just have different ideas and different beliefs. Right. So that's really cool. Yeah. That's really cool. I like that you guys are nonpartisan. Oh, yeah, oh. very much so. <laughs> yes. I mean, and I, it, you learn a lot about, you know, just the community that you're living it with. And, and, you know, here in the Lansing area, we're really, we really are kind of more purple. Um, but then some chapters in the state you go to and they're, you know, very red or very blue. Um, but even within those individual chapters, there's a, a blend of, of politics. So. Um, it, it is interesting. Does it ever become an issue? Not in our chapter. I don't think I haven't really seen it become an issue. We try not to make it an issue. Right. Um, it's not some, again, because of being nonpartisan, we, we don't really want to have a say on those, on, on anything because that's not what we're involved. That's not what we're getting involved with. Right. Right. That's, that's not the idea or the values that we have as a chap like as our chapter yeah. we, we want to we're, we're just trying to help our community be better yeah we don't right. and we don't want to necessarily create friction so. we try to we try to flip it so if there's somebody who is really strongly supporting a particular candidate instead of just supporting that candidate we'll say why well, maybe now is a good time to uh, host a meet the candidate um, session, which some of our chapters throughout the state do on a pretty regular basis. Um, JCI and JCs were really involved with the get out the vote. 
Um, and so it's not necessarily that we are pushing, um, a, pushing a narrative, pushing right. a narrative, pushing a party. We are pushing the involvement, uh, which is a different angle to take on it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I really like that. Um, cause one thing I have a, a huge problem with is like, cause I'm, I work at General Motors and I'm part of the UAW and it really bothers me because I'm like, they always take like, no matter what, they always support one political party. I'm like, why, why do they? It's like, because they have ties to this party. And it's like, it's so frustrating because I'm paying dues. It's like, no matter who you just support that person. I just I have a problem with that. Right. So I, I really like that you guys don't, don't do that. Yeah. No, I mean, I don't even know how you voted and I don't need to. <laughs> you don't need to. It doesn't <laughs> right. matter. It, right. <laughs> it's, it, I mean, it's none of my business. It's yeah. not a, I, and honestly, what, what you do is what you do. Yeah. Uh, but when we are here as a chapter, we have one end goal in mind. Just make sure when you are here that you have that end goal in mind. And that's, yeah, that's all. So what is a, what does a daily schedule look like for somebody like you with JCI? Well, being president, there's a little bit more going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, if you're on the board, you have to attend board meetings, which are right now the third Thursday of every month. It, they used to be Tuesdays. We uh, switched to Thursdays to accommodate one of our other board members. Uh, so we have to be at the board meetings. And then we have a general membership meeting every third Thursday of the month. Uh, the board meetings, um, general members are welcome to come in and sit in on. I also encourage uh, board members who are elected for the following year to come in and uh, observe just to see what happens. Um, but the, no, the members don't have to go to those. We do encourage our members to come to the general membership meetings uh, to talk about the events that are coming up, uh, what they have going on in their lives. Because uh, some of our members are small business owners, so we want to support them. So we ask, like, hey, what's going on with your business? Uh, what events are you getting involved in? Uh, there's a couple people in our chapter that are also part of other nonprofits. So we want to know what they're getting involved in and if we can help them out at all. Mm. So, yeah, we have two meetings a month. One is just typically just for the board and then the membership meeting. And then we'll, like I was talking about earlier, we'll sprinkle in some of those little smaller things. So we'll do either a member mixer or we'll do a new member orientation. Or we used to do something called get your food on where we would go to. Sounds like something I could do. Right. Yeah. (laughs) We would just try a different restaurant uh, once a month altogether. And so, yeah, it was little things like that too. Hmm. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Um. I had a question lined up. I don't remember. What, I don't remember what it was. It's it just, it just went. It it's just went again. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't remember now. And one of the things that you are doing a great job this year, Kristen, is uh, she's the spokesperson for the organization. So it, you're, she's doing things like this podcast. Yeah, she's going around to different areas, trying to get the name out. And that's, I just wanted to thank you publicly for doing such a great job. It's it's needed, and you've been doing a great job with it. Yeah, I wanted to take different avenues to try and get our name out. And so, I mean, like like being on this podcast, yeah, is it a little weird for me? Yes, it is. <laughs> However, um, to get our name out, I want to take risks. And if this is this is a really, really good avenue to do so, to get our name out. So, yeah. yeah so thank you for having us. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's what this podcast is for, is to help promote things like this in the community and um, businesses and whatnot. It's a really good opportunity for, for like, businesses like you or nonprofits like you and other business owners because, like, I mean, so many people listen to podcasts now. So yeah. it's like if they really want to get their, their voice out there and they don't have a source to, like, an actual media source, like the news or whatever, mm-hmm. this is a good avenue. Right. No, it's been, uh, it's been you know, it's been kind of hard because of COVID and everything. So we're, we're taking new approaches to try and just get our name out. So. Where are you guys located at? So we, we don't really have a, a building. I think right now we are partnered with the Lansing Chamber of Commerce. That's where uh, Junior Chamber comes from. Um, so we are partnered with the Lansing Chamber of Commerce. And I think we are, well, we're allowed to use their building. So if we do meet in person, we'll typically meet there um, and then maybe go out afterward for drinks or something like that. Uh, Beforehand, we did used to meet at different restaurants. 
Uh, we have since stopped doing that. And typically most of our meetings are via Zoom right now. I'm hoping to get them back in person next year, though. I, I would love to have them back in person next year. Very cool. Yeah. Zoom is pretty, I think people have fallen into the comfort of Zoom. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, That's easy. And not having to leave your, you know, your house and go out or yeah. whatnot. So, yeah, I... I would like to start getting people together again because like that's how that's how we're going to work together is if we're, we are together. But I mean, for right now, Zoom is convenient. It is also cold. So. <laughs> so now that you're not a part of JCI, what are what are you like? What's your uh, avenue and what, what are you doing with JCI now? Like you're, you're not a significant factor, right? In the local mm-hmm. No, not really. I mean, I'm, I'm here to help guide and support any way that I can. So um, I typically, anytime Kristen calls, I answer the phone, um, unless I'm on a cruise. But <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, it's like uh, like last week, I um, first off the bus, we were still trying to confirm the location of the event. Uh, and I w- had called Angela kind of concerned that we hadn't confirmed the location of the event yet and so she was there to help support me and then also give me other ideas for if like if the Walmart did fall through what we could do like as a backup so yeah she's been there uh and it's been a very very helpful um but you're also part of the past president's um like group. a group as well. So why don't you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, Lansing's one of the chapters because of our long history in Michigan. Uh, we actually have a pretty active past president group of Lansing um, past presidents. And really our only common ground is that at one point in time, we were president of the Lansing JCs or JCI Lansing. Um, and we meet uh, typically once a year, sometimes twice a year. Um, we try to stay in touch um, with each other. Several of them are very um, active business owners um, or they're very uh, active within the community. Um, and we look for ways that we can help support uh, either new members, the board. Um, we're always interested in making sure the, the chapter is staying strong and continuing. So one of the things we did a few years ago, one of the main barriers that people were um, bringing up was the membership dues. Um, And so we had put a fund together. So if somebody comes and they really want to become a member, but that's the only thing holding them back, um, you know, the past presidents can, you know, kind of sponsor a new member or even an existing member who maybe lost their job or is just having some financial difficulties Um, So we'll try to do things like that. I'm also, I try to act as an informal liaison. Um, So if something does come up, I can say, hey, reach out to so-and-so because they, you know, have helped us in the past. Or I was very uh, thankful to be involved with uh, the state level. So I did a lot of uh, state of Michigan positions. So um, I also can kind of be a bridge to you know, maybe other chapters throughout the state. So if something comes up, I'll say, hey, Frankenmuth ran into that. Mm. Reach out to so-and-so and and they'll be able to help or, you know, um, and they might not be doing it anymore, but, you know, that, that knowledge is still there and we can, we can kind of help, help navigate through it. So I don't, actively chair projects anymore so I, I kind of get that nice you know I'm, I'm there I'm nudging I'm coaching I'm helping um, and you know just trying to keep things moving forward as much as possible. Well to be fair earlier this year you did talk about doing the golf scramble. We are going to do that. Yeah. I blocked it on my calendar. <laughs> yeah. So we, <laughs> that, that will be a nice joint project. So that will be fun. That will be, I think a huge bridge for, you know, some of our older members who are exhausted um, and our current members will get a golf scramble in place. That's probably going to be in September. Um, we'll stay tuned on the date, but <laughs> um, you know, things like that, if we can organize them and, and get all of us together, it's just, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, do you guys do this full time or do you have, do you own a business or what do you? So th- this is all volunteer based. So this Oof. is all, yeah. So this is everything that we do is in our own time. Um, I do have a full time job. I work as a paralegal over at Auto Owners. Um, Angela works at Vertifor. Um, so this is this is what we do in our extracurricular time. What is that <laughs> extracurricular time? Yeah, what is right. That? Yeah, exactly. That, that's <laughs> why it's so that? hard to get people engaged. Yeah. And we try to, um, you know, handle the events that people can 
make sure they can handle successfully. I mean, we don't try to force like a calendar that's already kind of pre-built. It kind of depends on everyone's availability. When you get up to the to the higher levels, though, I think so. Correct me if I'm wrong. Does it become a job when you become world president? Yeah, there are certain paid positions. That's okay. one of them. Okay. So um, there are certain paid positions um, that are available, um, but it's not intended to be a career. It might just be paid for a term. Mm. Um, but because as world president, you're traveling, you know, 90% of the time. Right. They had to do yeah. a stipend for, um, you know, making that, making sure that could happen. Okay. Uh, I was. That, that's I, really cool, though, because then you know people are doing good things right for for not a profit yeah like they're they're doing it for a good reason or for a good cause Mm -hmm. yeah one one thing that i really enjoy about being part of this organization is that because we are international if you are traveling somewhere you can reach out to the jc's in that country and it's like you already you don't have to worry about like meeting people you Mm -hmm. don't have to worry about you know figuring out where where you're going to go they are going to help you out because you're already part of that same organization. We just had a, yeah, there's a girl that I know that um, is part of the Allian JCs and she went to Switzerland not that long ago. And she, she met up with the Swiss JCs over there Mm -hmm. and she hung out with them for a day. And like, that's, that's really, that's such a cool connection to have. We had a member who moved from Lansing to Edmonton. Um, and I reached out, I was president at the time. I reached out to the, um, Edmonton president and did a introduction within a week of her moving in to an apartment that somebody in the Edmonton JCs had recommended. She went to her first happy hour and, you know, immediately had 25 new friends, um, in a new city. So it was, it was, that is a really cool benefit that we probably don't take advantage of, of enough, but it's it's nice just because you have that connection, um, so you have this network available to you. How do you how do you find these connections within the network? Is there like a, some sort of chat form or like what is? So if you go on to uh, J, so if you're looking for chapters within Michigan, so there's jcimichigan.org. If you go uh, onto their website, it lists every single chapter within the state. And then if you go to JCI USA, it lists every single chapter in the country. So if you are looking to like, like Angela was saying, say I move from Lansing to, you know, South Carolina, I can go on and look at the South Carolina, you know, chapters down there, see if one's close to me. And if it is, I can reach out to them and I already have a connection. So you can, yeah, you can go on. I think I think they're all listed online on each website. So there's JCI Michigan, JCI USA, and then just JCI. And I think they're all listed on there as well. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Very cool. Is there anything else you guys want to promote or talk about? What date is Stuff the Bus? Uh, December 3rd. It's going to be at yeah. uh, Saturday, December 3rd at Eastwood Town Center. Again, we are benefiting um, – Gardner International Magnet School. Uh, they are asking for uh, supplies to fill up their classrooms as well as basic needs for the kids. So like uh, deodorant, toothbrushes, um, even even clothing items. And the list for that will be passed out at the doors? Yeah. Okay. Yep. List for that will be passed out at the door. If you want to visit JCI Lansing on Facebook, there is a flyer up there right now. With uh, It does list a few examples of items that are going to be needed. Very cool. Yeah. Um, is that it? I think that's it for now. Yeah. When is our next general membership meeting? Oh, I yeah. should know this, but yeah, <laughs> uh, it's actually going to be, no, we just had it. It was this past Thursday. Okay. So the next general membership meeting will be December 15th. We are looking to do like a holiday, uh, white elephant gift giving party that day um so we're still figuring out if that's going to be if that's going to happen or not that's usually typically what we usually do during the holiday season um so yeah it'll be december 15th it's a thursday and if one wants to join how can they do so uh just go to jcilansing.org uh they can feel free to or if they want they can uh, reach us through facebook through the jci lansing facebook page um or they can reach out to me directly uh my email is k e 
Rhine, and that's K-E-R-H-I-N-E at gmail.com if you have any questions. Awesome. All that will be in the show notes. Thank you, Angela, for doing this. Thank you, Kristen, for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.